Hi, I'm Lee Bullen, and this is my film pitch for Killer Groove, a slasher movie with soul. This presentation, I hope, finds its way to those in the know, but should also be an entertaining watch for Red Bull filled netizens in their sweatpants. As both titles suggest, music plays a big part of the film, and while effectively about a serial killer, the style is larger than life, and the brutal violent scenes are juxtaposed with the sound of soulful dance floor fillers of the era. You can still have a very scary scene to Marvin Gaye, and it'd be better for it because it hasn't been seen before. For this reason, I like to refer to Killer Groove as a bloody blend of Tarantino, Wes Craven, and Soul Train. Tarantino, a cliche in itself to reference him, I know, but for the daring mash of contrasting elements and unashamed use of cultural references. Wes Craven for the horror scenes used for the five murders that feature in the film. And Soul Train for the up-tempo groove and style of the era and because the protagonist lures his victims to the Red Moon Soul Club. The following short pitch is essentially the intro to the movie and set up for Act 1, the killing spree of Tyler McCoy, revealing where the plot leads at the end. So, let's drop the needle on this. The year is 1984. Rising to the top by Kenny Burke blasts from the DJ's booth as Tyler McCoy glides through the Red Moon Soul Club, turning heads with every stride along the Crimson Hallway. His recent ex-flame, Libby, is there too, the winner of an all-expenses-paid evening with heatwave singer Keith Wilder, after being surprised by the producer of the hit radio show Killer Groove earlier that day. The excited Miss Ventura County 1983 beauty queen is disappointed when she arrives at the VIP booth and sees her last boyfriend sitting on the red sofa instead of the dreamy soul star. However, Tyler's charm soon win her over and the complimentary champagne is equally as disarming. As the up-tempo groove reverberates around the beamed red walls, Tyler pours the last drops from the champagne bottle and leans in to kiss Libby, already sitting tightly against him on the sofa. Smiling club goers of all persuasion show off their dance moves to the bass-driven funk and brutal violence appears to be the last vibration on anyone's mind tonight. A beautiful waitress gathers empty glasses and a filled ashtray from the VIP booth and, with a clear hint of jealousy, watches Tyler leave the club with his light-headed ex-girlfriend. Tyler, a sought-after session bassist for LA Recording Studios, convinces Libby to share a final drink and escorts her to his converted Dodge camper van at the far end of the car park. Its new metallic purple paint job sparkling under the clear moonlit sky. She sits on a beanbag in the back of the van, her anxious face illuminated by the red interior light, as Tyler puts on Supernatural Thing Parts 1 and 2 by Ben E. King, released in 1975, and offers her sparkling wine in a cup. The blood splatters across the transparent sheeting covering every inch of the van's walls and ceiling. Tyler calmly wipes Libby's blood from his face and hand scythe 
and starts wrapping her body in a plastic sheeting. And so begins the killing spree of Tyler McCoy, the second of five ex-girlfriends he plans to slay. While Libby was Tyler's first planned kill, she was actually the second ex-girlfriend to die at his hands that week. Days earlier, Kay was accidentally killed during a drunken fling at his house, and her weighed down body accompanies Libby's at the bottom of Santa Clara River. Meanwhile, three former girlfriends are unaware that they're about to receive a call from the producer of Killer Groove, offering an all expenses paid evening with their favourite soul singer. Supernatural. Killer Groove. A slasher movie with soul. Featuring 70s and 80s dance floor fillers by Change, D Train, Donald Bird, Earth, Wind and Fire, Clear, Stevie Wonder, and many more. I hope you enjoyed the pitch and I peaked to know more. Here's some extra tidbits for those still viewing. The film will use strong primary colours for different backdrops. So infrequently used and so effective when done right. You uh, chopped your wife and daughter up into little bits. I don't have any recollection of that at all. So how did this all begin? Well, it all started with this song. And just recently I've been playing it in the car and I'm listening to it and I'm thinking this would make a great intro to a film. I don't know what film, I don't even know if I'm the person who's going to write the film, just a film. This needs to open it, this needs to be the starting song almost in its entirety. Okay, well I love this song, I see it as an intro to a film. What kind of film would it be? I saw violent, extreme violent images, blood spraying, almost over the top 300, you know, when there's, when there's blood, it's bucket loads. And I saw that working, that juxtaposition of those soulful songs of the uh, late 70s, early 80s with violence. And so while the music's playing, the bass is kicking in, quick shots between revelers in the nightclub. The protagonist walking through the club. The arrival of the first victim and by the end of the song the whole thing leads to a brutal murder this film will look and feel different and will shock surprise and thrill cinema goers in a way that they haven't been for years Give it all you got. Keep on getting-